I am Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful and I snowshoed down to the lake today to show you a couple new blankets I just finished. This is Lake Simpatico in my neighborhood in southwest Colorado. And if you look really closely back there, you can see the La Plata Mountains. And uh, Rosie's with me as usual here. And the blanket I have to show you today is called the Grateful Blanket. And there are two sizes to make. This is the smaller size, like a baby blanket or child's blanket. And this one is really big. It's hard to show the whole thing. <laughs> That is the adult size throw blanket, a really generously sized throw blanket. So uh, it's a really easy, super easy pattern, all double crochet. And I used Karen Colorama Halo yarn for this. Uh, you can use Karen Colorama, you can use any bulky weight yarn. It's bulky weight category five and uh, uses a six millimeter hook. So this yarn is really nice, I enjoyed it. It's kind of a unique, I guess I say put up of the yarn. It's not really a cake, it's not really a skein, it's this circle shape. And I used all of it or I would have <laughs> brought some to show you. But it's um, it's kind of similar to Red Heart Huga yarn. It's like kind of the last comparable yarn I used compared to this. It has a kind of white fuzzy halo on it that feels really silky. It's, um, it's a polyester nylon blend. I used the colorway uh, Lavender Frost for the baby blanket here. And the baby blanket takes two cakes, two, two uh, ogos, I guess, two circles of, of this Caron Simply Soft, uh, Caron Colorama yarn. And that is about 962 yards or 880 meters. And this one um, is about 36 by 44 inches or 91 by 112 centimeters. It's 108 double crochet stitches wide and about 79 rows. So basically when you start the blanket, you, I like to start at the darker end uh, of a gradient yarn to have the darker ends on the edges of the blanket. So pull from the darker end once you open the Ogo and the tutorial video that, that comes right after this will show you how to open one. And then you work toward the light, light color and that's where the first skein will run out. Then when you add the second skein of yarn, start work pulling from the lighter end and crochet back out to the dark end to make a symmetrical blanket. So this uh, larger size adult throw blanket, I, I took the, the throw blanket we currently have on our couch and I measured that because we all love it. It's a really good size. And I aimed for that. It turned out slightly bigger, but uh, this is really a good family blanket. Um, this color is called Nutmeg Frost and I used four skeins of Caron Colorama Halo Ogo yarn. Um, so this uh, large throw is about 46 by 70, so almost four feet wide and uh, 70 inches long. And it uh, starts with 136 double crochet. So 136 double crochet wide, you wor uh, work four skeins, dark to light, light to dark, dark to light, light back out to dark on the other end. So uh, that requires about 1,924 yards or 1,760 meters. So you can make any size blanket you want. Um, just crochet until it's, it's wide enough for you, your first row, your foundation double crochet row or your row of chains and then your first row of double crochet stitches. And, um, and then keep going until you run out of yarn. <laughs> Two cakes, three cakes or four cakes is kind of like from baby blanket to um, adult throw size. This is a pretty good size for kids. My seven-year-old was laying under it um, and he, he fit comfortably in this. Um, and my oldest son is six too, so <laughs> this longer one is more for him. But uh, you can always work just three skeins if you don't want it to be super long. So uh, if you're a beginner, keep watching and I'll show you how to get started on the blanket, how to do the first few rows. Like I said, it's all double crochet stitches in U.S. terms. Um, and it's called the Grateful Blanket because, you know, crochet is really one of those things I'm grateful for. It's just something in the evening, I could sit by the wood stove on a cold day like we've been having here and um, just crochet, just, it's so peaceful, it's productive, I love it. So that's one of the things I'm grateful for. Um, my son, Will, my 15 year old, actually thought of the name, so thank you, Will. <laughs> and I hope you enjoy, happy crocheting. Thank you for watching. Hello, I'm Susan Kennedy of Pretty Peaceful. 
and today I'm going to show you how to crochet the grateful blanket. This is a beginner level crochet blanket that um, comes in two sizes. Uh, this purple one here is the baby blanket size that uses two skeins of bulky weight yarn. Uh, this is Karen Colorama Halo yarn in this kind of interesting style. It's not really a cake or a skein. It's, I guess, the Ogo <laughs> circle. But these attracted my attention at the yarn store. I decided to pick some up. It's a bulky weight yarn, category five. But really, you can use any yarn you like to make this blanket. So um, the Grateful Blanket has two uh, size options. The first is the baby blanket size that uses two of these. And that's the size I made for this purple blanket here. Um, two skeins. This is a baby blanket or child's blanket size. It is 36 by 44 inches, uh, which is 91 by 112 centimeters. And um, it required two of these skeins, which is a total of 962 yards or 880 meters. So you don't have to use this specific yarn. You can use any yarn you like. And um, I'm using a six millimeter J hook because that's what's recommended on the yarn label here. Um, if you are using a different yarn, use whatever uh, hook that it recommends on the label. And then the second size is, so this, this baby blanket size, it's really for kids too. Um, my seven year old was laying under it and it's just perfect for him laying down reading a book. Um, kind of size or in a, as a car blanket for kids, maybe up to eight, eight years old. Um, and the second size that I'm going to show you how to make is, uh, it's an adult throw size, kind of adult blanket size for laying on the couch watching TV. So it's a lot wider. Uh, the adult throw size is 45 by 66 inches, and that's 114 by 168 centimeters. And that's going to require four of these. Um, balls of yarn total, um, or 1,924 yards, which is 1,760 meters. So the larger one requires twice as much yarn. You can um, use whatever yarn you like. And this yarn I really enjoy. This is my first time using this Karen Kellerama Halo yarn. It's a bulky weight. It's a, a blend of acrylic nylon and polyester, and it has a little bit of a halo to it, a really silky halo. It's a very unique yarn, and um, it's it's kind of like my family's favorite yarn, which um, is Red Heart Huga yarn, H-Y-G-G-E, and I'll show you a blanket I made with that yarn. This is the, <laughs> the blanket we're using on our couch constantly made with this yarn. This is my Runa C2C blanket pattern. That's what's on our couch now, and they just love the silkiness of this yarn and the weight. So knowing that my family, my, my sons and my husband love bulky weight yarn, I saw this at the store, this kind of silky bulky weight, I couldn't resist. So I do recommend it. It's good. Uh, really, really nice to crochet with. Works up quickly because it's a bulky weight. Um, yeah, so <laughs> let's get started. I'm gonna show you how to get started from the very beginning, including how to open up these skeins here. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. I was a little skeptical of this uh, yarn cake shape because I've never used it before. Um, and I was, you know, you wonder if it's gonna tangle while you're working, which is really irritating. Nobody likes to undo knots. Um, but it's it's really easy to work from. So you can kind of pull that tag off and it's held together by this little plastic piece. So we're gonna cut that. And if you're using an ombre yarn like me, I like to start with the darkest edges um, on the edges of the blanket. So I'm gonna kind of start pulling from the darker end of the ombre yarn. And this little piece here is stuck, okay. So it didn't come out perfectly, but you know, it hardly ever does, <laughs> even on a cake yarn. Um, another yarn that's kind of similar to this besides the Red Heart Huga yarn um, might be a Red Heart Brushed. You could use Red Heart Super Saver for this. 
If you want to, I might go down to um, a 5.5 millimeter hook instead of a six. If you're using Red Heart Super Saver, but they have some nice ombre colors as well, kind of gradients. So the very first thing you wanna do when you have your yarn in your hook is to make a slip knot. I'm gonna see if I can zoom in even more here. So the way I make a slip knot is I lay the yarn down and bend it in kind of a loop there. And then I make another loop over here and tuck it around and under that first little loop and then pull on both ends to tighten it. And then you have a little slip knot there like a noose and put that on your hook. Uh, I forgot to mention there is a written pattern for this if you prefer a written pattern to follow rather than a video. You can find the pattern on Ravelry.com, um, also on Lovecrafts.com and Etsy.com. And you can find links to all of those through my website, PrettyPeaceful.com. So there are two ways to start the blanket, um, two kind of options for creating that first row. And then after that, every single row is double crochet. So once you get started, it's easy sailing, um, but the first row can be frustrating, especially if you're a new crocheter. So the kind of simple traditional way to start is by a chain stitch. And that's when you kind of grab the yarn with your hook and pull it through that slip knot that we had on our hook. So you're yarning over, pulling through, that's a chain stitch. Now this is tricky if you're a new a crocheter. The hardest part is really figuring out how to hold it. So I like to put the, the yarn kind of over and under my hands and I hold the piece of yarn and all the yarns kind of getting held by my left hand and then only the hook in the right hand. Grab the yarn, pull it through, chain stitch. So to do this option, you chain 110 stitches and um, keep going out <laughs> and you kind of have to move your thumb to hold it at the base of the work um, as you move kind of move your thumb up a little bit and um, chain all the way out until you get to 110 for the baby blanket or 138 for the adult size throw so you can keep chaining till your desired number really you can chain any number you want when you feel like it's wide enough um, you can stop. And for me, for a baby blanket to be about uh, three feet wide, that takes 110 chains total. And for the adult throw, 138 chains. So when you're chaining, and then you, <clears throat> you can go back and count how many you have. I like to count by twos, like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, like that. It can be frustrating. This is why there's another option <laughs> because it's hard to count these little chains. And then it can also be tricky to work into them. But I'll show you what, what we do once you have your desired number of chains, either 110 or 138. Then we would double crochet into the third chain from the hook. So that's one, two, three. You double crochet into this little loop. So to double crochet, we wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that third chain, yarn over, pull through the chain, yarn over again, pull through two of those loops, yarn over again, and pull through the other two loops. That's a double crochet stitch. So you would place one double crochet stitch into each chain all the way down back to where you started at the slip knot. And for the baby blanket, you would have 108 double crochet stitches total counting this first chain three as a stitch. So that's one, two, three stitches right there. So one double crochet stitch into each chain all the way down. And that's the first row of this blanket. It, you know, it's good to take your time. This first row is always, first row is always the hardest on any crochet pattern for me, um, whether it's a simple blanket or a really complicated pattern. Once you get started, it'll be easy sailing from there, but this first row can be tricky. So that's one option. The first option, option A, is chain either 110 or 138, double crochet into the third chain from the hook, and each chain across. 
So for the baby blanket, you would have 108 double crochet stitches, counting that first one. And for the adult throw, you would have 136 double crochet. Now I'm going to show you the second option. This is the option that I prefer to use. Um, that's called a foundation double crochet. And this is when you make the double crochet stitch in the chain both at the same time. For me, it's a lot easier to count, to keep track of. It's a lot easier to stitch into. Um, it's just easier. So this is how I always start blankets. Um, and I learned this from Tamara Kelly at Moogly.com. Um, I'll show you one more time how to make the slip knot. You kind of bend the yarn into a loop and then grab another loop from over here and put that under and through and pinch it and then pull on both ends. And you have a slip knot to put on your hook. Now to foundation double crochet, it does start with a chain three, one, two, three chain stitches. And I don't usually count those as a stitch because they're so small, I usually just kind of ignore them. So to do a foundation double crochet stitch, we're gonna yarn over, insert the hook into the um, third hook, Third chain from the hook, one, two, three. It's really the first chain we made, first slip knot. Then yarn over, pull it through that. So we're kind of halfway through a double crochet stitch now, but we're gonna add in that chain. We're gonna chain one, and I like to pinch that chain between my fingers. Then just finish the double crochet stitch like you normally would. Yarn over, pull through two loops on the hook yarn over, pull through two more loops on the hook. So we made a double crochet stitch. We're kind of making it a little sideways instead of up and down. Um, and then to do the next one, you yarn over, stick the hook into that chain that you were pinching, the chain you made halfway through that stitch. Yarn over, pull it through, chain one and pinch it. Yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. So now we have two double crochet stitches plus that starting chain three that I ignore. So now we're gonna yarn over the hook, insert into that chain that we've been pinching, yarn over, pull it through, chain one, pinch it, yarn over, pull through two of the three loops on the hook, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops on the hook. So there's our third foundation double crochet stitch. So that's like your first row is already made for you. So let's keep going. We're going to yarn over, go into that chain we just made, yarn over, pull through the loop on the hook, chain one, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I'm going to keep going. To me, this is a lot easier. I still do like to go slow on this. Chain one, and finish the, the double crochet stitch. So it's really like you're starting a double crochet stitch like you normally would, but in the middle you're adding this chain one and then finishing the double crochet stitch. So it's making that row of chains and the row of double crochets at the same time. And now we have like a bigger piece to hold on to. It's one of the advantages. Your chains don't get all twisted around. To me, um, I, I was really grateful for learning this technique. <laughs> Saves a lot of frustration. Um, a lot of times when I crochet into chains, it just, it looks kind of, you know, the chains are all uneven sizes. It's hard to keep your tension right. And if the first chain, the first row of your blanket is kind of wavy and off, um, sometimes it can really just not set a good solid stage. The whole rest of your blanket can get kind of crooked. So um, I prefer this foundation double crochet uh, method. And if what I'm doing here doesn't make sense, please feel free to go to moogly.com and learned it from <laughs> the crochet teacher who taught me. Uh, thank you, Tamara, for that. And um, yeah, I've, I've learned a lot of great things. I'll show you another trick I learned from her here in a minute. So this is what your foundation double crochet rule looks like. And you'd go all the way out to either 108 stitches. And when I count these, I like to count by kind of the columns. So I ignore that first one. This would be 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 
12, 14, 15 stitches. So you keep going with the foundation double crochet until you get to 108 for a baby size or 136 for a uh, adult size throw. So what do you do when you get to the next row is you kind of flip over your work when you're um, foundation double crocheting and now we're going to work into these stitches. You can see each stitch looks like a little V. That's where we're going to be crocheting. We're going to be inserting our hook under that V of that stitch. So here's the other trick I learned from Tamara Kelly of Moogly and this is how to start a row. Uh, we have two options. You can chain one, two, three, and then that can either count as a stitch or you can ignore it and double crochet into the first stitch, double crochet into the second stitch. And so I'm yarning over, inserting the hook under that little V that forms the top of a double crochet stitch, yarn over and pull it through, yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through the last two loops on the hook. So depending if you count that chain as a double crochet or not, that would be one, two, three stitches. Um, here's a way that I find that's easier than the chain three thing. Um, it can be really hard to crochet back into a chain three. So this is a better way, just like, um, just like the foundation double crochet. What I do is pull up a, a loop um, this is called a chainless starting double crochet or a chainless standing double crochet. You pull up a loop that's about the size of a double crochet stitch, about the height. Put your finger on top, wrap the yarn around, insert it into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through the stitch, and then it's just like finishing a double crochet stitch, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the second two loops. So you kind of just made a double crochet stitch out of thin air and it's still got um, that kind of top V on it to stitch into when you come back at the end of the next row. So I recommend doing the chainless standing double crochet or chainless starting double crochet um, because it keeps the edges straight and it, um, it's easier to crochet into. So it's worth practicing. It takes a little to get used to, like keeping your finger on the top of the stitch there. So <clears throat> row two and every other row of this blanket is really either chain three or chainless standing double crochet and then double crochet into each stitch across. Now one disadvantage of this yarn is it can be really hard to see the stitches and count the stitches because it does have this delicious silky fuzziness. Um, but you know, take your time and if you miss one, it's not too big of a deal. <laughs> but you can count your stitches at the end of each row and make sure you have the same number of stitches every time. If it goes down, it goes up, then you know you either missed one or put it an extra one somewhere. So that's basically how to, how to make the grateful blanket here. Now, I'll show you the, the first cake that I've already crocheted for this in this uh, the adult size, now that we've seen how to start it. I started at the dark end and did that foundation row here. Um, all the way across to 136 stitches. And then I've double crocheted into each um, stitch. And I have 136 stitches in each row. And I just crocheted until my, my skein of yarn ran out. So this is one whole uh, cake of the, the Colorama Halo yarn. And so my blanket is one quarter of the way done now. And um, we need to add the next skein of yarn. So for the next skein of yarn, we are gonna start at the light colored end. We're gonna add the next skein of yarn from the light colored end and work back out to the darker colored end. And then we're gonna join the next one starting at the dark end and going to the light. And then we'll join the last one starting at the light and going to the dark colored yarn. So it's gonna be kind of just a double um, version of this baby blanket. It's gonna start dark and go to the light and then light to dark, and then we're gonna do that whole same thing over again. I love a good ombre yarn. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how I like to join the next ball of yarn so that it doesn't come unraveled. We don't have to um, uh, make any knots, and it's kind of seamless for when you leave in your ends. 
So um, I was able to get about 31 rows out of this skein of yarn. How many rows you will get is gonna vary um, depending on your tension of how loose or tight you're holding the yarn. But I will show you how I join my yarn here. I work a regular double crochet stitch, but I don't finish it. I only work it till that last, where, where I would be yarning over. And completing the stitch, I'm gonna yarn over with the new skein of yarn. And for this yarn, I'm gonna leave a pretty long tail. People usually recommend about six inches, but I like to leave a, a bit longer yarn tail to weave in whenever the yarn is silky, like a velvet yarn. Those yarns can be, uh, the yarn ends can be kind of slippery and unwind themselves. Uh, so you wanna give yourself extra room to weave it in very well. So I'm gonna yarn over with the new yarn and just grab it and pull it through here. So now I have two long yarn ends, the end of the old skein and then the beginning of the new skein. And I'm gonna crochet over both of these just for a second to really like tack them down. So to crochet over it, you just lay them on top of the stitch that you're gonna work into and just pretend like they're not there and work a regular double crochet stitch around both of those yarn tails. I like to do that for two or three stitches. And once you have three stitches or so, you can give them both a, a gentle little tug just to make sure there's no slack. And it's a pretty invisible way to join it. And then I like to pull one of the yarn tails out and I'm gonna weave that back that way. And I'm gonna crochet over the other one for two or three stitches. Just so it's not super obvious where we're changing skeins here, it's like a gentle transition. Now I'm gonna drop this one, I'm gonna stop crocheting over it, and I'm just gonna crochet like normal. Just into the regular stitch. And now I'll show you how uh, I like to weave in these yarn ends so that they last. If you're like me and you have little boys, <laughs> you know they're really hard on your home goods, and uh, I really have to weave mine in carefully or else the kids just kind of uh, the wear and tear gets to them. So let me grab my needle and I'll show you how I weave these yarn tails in. Okay, so I'm gonna thread the end of my yarn uh, through a yarn needle or tapestry needle. And I'm gonna weave this tail back in the direction um, it came from, but I'm gonna go forward one stitch. So the yarn's coming out from between these two stitches. I'm gonna grab this stitch here before I go back through these four or five stitches and pull it through. I like to kind of keep my thumb over that stitch so it doesn't make a big hole there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go backwards one stitch in the direction I just came from and then move kind of working forward again through four or five stitches. Pull it tight a little bit and then I'm gonna go in this opposite direction here, but I'm going to grab this stitch before I go back through. So we've kind of locked down the yarn tail three times, moving a couple different directions. That really protects it from kind of wear and tear if the blanket's all, uh, always getting pulled in the same direction. So it's a fairly invisible join here once we clip the little tail. Thank you for watching. I hope you uh, make the Grateful Blanket. I hope you love it. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Make a comment. And happy crocheting. Thank you.